In this video, I want to give beginners some solid advice in graphic design and creativity in general. I am Will Patterson, I am a graphic designer and have been for over a decade and during that time I have been designing logos for hundreds of companies, I've designed for things like Adobe, I've designed things for Instagram, Scrollerbox and I've branded a lot of people too. I've learned a lot since being a beginner and I want to give you the advice I wish I got when I first started out over 10 years ago. Number one, clients like your skills but they like your problem solving better. You've got to talk the talk and walk the walk. A lot of people get into graphic design thinking it's more of an artist profession, that it's very creative. And to some extent, some graphic design is more artistic, like poster design, you know, typographic, it depends on the function after. And then there's a few of us who get into the industry and realize that it's very business centered. It's actually quite problem solving centered. Now your boss, your clients, they love your skills. They love that you know how to use the program and know what to do, which is basically a carbon copy of someone else but they like your problem solving ability even better. This is where you get clients from. This is how you maintain your reputation as a designer. How do you solve the problem of designing a logo or rebranding a company to make them look more modern in this age? Say you're working for a solicitor's firm that don't want to look too serious. I don't know who would want that, but there's the problem and you need to solve that in a way that makes sense to them and to their clients. Your creative work, if it's done on a professional level and it's not about selling aesthetic things like art, is more to do with problem solving. So keep that in the forefront of your mind. It's not just your creative ability, it's how you solve problems. Number two, it's okay to be terrible at some things. I know it sounds weird. We all want to be very good at everything we do, but that's not reality. The more I've been in the industry, the more I've realized how bad I am at certain things. Layout is not my forte. In fact, logo type design is what I do best. That is what I'm most known for. That's probably why you come to this channel. I use my strengths and I try to strengthen my weaknesses. Everyone has one and that's absolutely fine. The faster that you identify your weaknesses, the more you can actually grow in them if that's something you want to do. We live in a world where we should always be in a constant improvement and that can be quite toxic. You know, we've got self-development culture, you know, there's toxic self-help which isn't good. Sometimes it's nice to just enjoy what you do and be okay in your weaknesses in work. And for me, I'm more than happy in my weaknesses. It gives me something to focus on if I do want to get better at it. So don't be worried about your weaknesses. Number three, soak in information as inspiration. You're a graphic designer. You must have all these fancy posters in your office. You've got to have things in a certain way and you only look at graphic design books. You only see images and that's it. Well, that is quite normal. And that's why I'm saying not to do that. If all you're taking in is other graphic designers work, then all you'll put out on the output is similar work. If you're wanting to differentiate yourself, if you want to be different, which I think we all do secretly want to be different, but good, it's important to take inspiration from elsewhere. For me, I love music. I play guitar. I recently bought a seven string Ibanez headless, which is great for prog metal. To a lot of people, it would be weird if I said that I take a lot of inspiration from design in there, from playing the guitar. But to me, it makes a lot of sense. I love the fact that there's a lot of contrast in prog metal from the lows with the seven string and the highs. To me, this just gives me some inspiration for my actual design work. For you, it could be that you love reading certain stories and the way that you tell stories to clients or the way that you want people to perceive your work is in a similar way. It might not make sense to other people, but soak in any information that you get as inspiration. The next piece of advice is attached to the last one, which is always carry a sketchbook. Now, I appear to be lying about that one today, about the always, but as much as possible, be carrying a sketchbook. Normally, I have this tiny field notes book. It's dot grid, and I take this pencil with me everywhere I go. This is the Rotaring 800 half millimeter. It's a retractable mechanical pencil, and the reason why I carry these around with me all the time, or as much as possible, when I see a shape, or when I see something, or an idea strikes, I don't leave it in my head. I've had to sort of train myself to really sketch it down. And it's more of a discipline than something I do instinctually. Writing an idea down or a sketch or a doodle of something that's just popped in your mind just frees it from you having to try and remember it. It also helps you double it down in your mind and to see whether the idea could work. 
Carrying the sketchbook allows me to, when I'm walking or when I'm at home or between the office and home, to see whether an idea will work. I've always got a place to formulate shapes for logos compositions for lettering, or even just video ideas. Sometimes I just use my phone on a notes app. It's the same thing, but if you're a drawer, someone who wants to be better at logo designs, don't just stick to the computer, get yourself a sketchbook, one that you can carry with you everywhere. And you'll be shocked. Don't show the sketchbook to anyone, but you'll be shocked at the output that you get from having a cool sketchbook that you can just take with you. The next piece of advice I'll give to any creative beginner is to find something or find a thing that isn't your thing. Now, recently I saw a video of Peter McKinnon, who is a guy that's inspired me for many years, ever since the dawn of his channel, all to do with videography. And recently he said something about finding a thing that isn't your thing. So graphic design, logo design is my thing. That's what you guys see from me. But I like a lot of other things and I like to, or I'd like to make content on them. So I love playing guitars, you know, that's sort of my other thing. It's so easy as creative professionals to be just stuck on one thing and hyper fixate and hyper focus on, you know, doing, being the best logo designer, being the best artist, being the best musician. Whatever you do creatively, find something else that isn't the thing that you're known for. That's where the inspiration can strike, but also it just keeps you sane. When I'm not working and I'm at home, I just like to jam out to some random music. For me, it sort of clears my mind. It gives me something else to focus on, which refreshes one side. It's kind of like turning one engine off and turning one on, or in music terms, it's kind of like switching the oscillator around. So maybe you're a graphic designer, but you love rock climbing. Maybe you love painting. Maybe you love writing. Do those things. Don't let your thing be the only thing that you do. You, you'll miss out on so much inspiration. The next piece of advice is you aren't as good as you think. You're a beginner, you're new. It's okay to not be good. I can guarantee you that as a beginner, when you grow and become more expert, you won't feel like it. And when you do, there's a problem because you've stopped learning. I think it's a natural response to always be questioning your work. And I think that's a healthy, there's a healthy middle ground of that of understanding what your weaknesses and strengths are, but also wanting to be better. So having the idea of, you know, you're not as good as you think, or you're not as good as you could be, is a great piece of advice for me when I was younger, because it really helped solidify and to validate the fact that everyone probably feels like this at some point, but then I realized everyone feels it all the time. There's even now, a lot of people look at what I do and say, oh, if I could get to his level, I'll be fine. But then I'm still sat here looking at other people online, other logo designers I'm friends with, thinking if I could just get to that level, it's a never ending spiral. And I think comparison within that is completely normal, but we need to sort of take that and kind of embrace it in a way and understand that we're always looking at other people as better. And the best way to mark your progress is to compare yourself with not someone else, but with yourself from last year. Are you constantly improving in small marginal ways? And saying that, another piece of advice is failing is good. Or if you want a better title, failing is part of the process. I used to do this talk a lot when I was doing a lot of public speaking years ago and it was called Fail to Success. I talked about how my whole job and everything that I do now is from constantly failing. So even now when we post a video and it doesn't do really well, like it's another thing that I'm learning from. I failed, but I keep going until something succeeds. The same is for every aspect of my job. Every time I'm designing a logo, I will draw 100 terrible ideas until I get to one. Might be an exaggeration, but you get the point. Don't be afraid of failing as a beginner. Being in that beginner stage, failing might feel frustrating because you wanna give up. Now, I'm not gonna tell you not to give up and I'm not gonna tell you to keep going. That's something that you need to decide. But failure is 100% guaranteed when starting out. And if I could go back now and think about the times that I failed in my work, knowing what I know now, because I just kept going, 
until I succeeded in that project or in that realm. I would just like, again, validate it, that failing is completely normal. It's part of the process. It's something that everyone does. So get over it. <laughs> and the last piece of advice for any graphic designer or creative professional is to love the process as much as the goal. There's an amazing book that I've read called Atomic Habits, and I would suggest anyone else to read it, especially if you work for yourself or if you have high dreams and aspirations. Essentially, the goals that you have need to be brought to fruition through system. And you need to focus on the system to getting you there, the things that you've got to do every day to get to that goal. A good analogy would be if you're wanting to get you know, absolutely stacked, muscled, and that is your goal to get stacked. Well, how do you get there? Well, every day you've got to go to the gym. You've got to exercise. You've got to look after your diet. Now, if you have the goal of getting stacked, but you don't love the process or have this innate desire to go through that process, then you're going to struggle to achieve that goal. So to get there, you've got to love the fact that you're looking after your diet, that you're going to the gym, that you're every day pumping some weight. And the same is for your goals at work or your goals in creativity. Instead of focusing purely on the goals, focus on the system behind the goals of how you get there and make sure that you're intentionally achieving those systems and reward yourself for it. If someone told me that when I was younger, I would have loved that because the system, I didn't know whether I was just loving it too much, but I attribute a lot of what I do now and the successes that I've had, however small, from just completing those systems and going through them and loving them at the same time. I hope you guys enjoyed this strange, different video. I just wanted to encourage any beginner graphic designers out there because it is a strange world that we live in. There's more designers than ever before that are competing with each other. So how do we go about this? If you enjoyed this video, then you'll definitely enjoy this other one, which teaches you how to unleash your creative potential. I did this one about half a year ago, and it's one that I think will help you as a beginner out. Make sure to hit the subscribe button, leave a like and a comment, and I'll catch you in the next video. See you soon. Goodbye.